of the most iconic voices in golf are back to save the day and ready to entertain in their newly weekly video podcast. Costas and McCord. Off their rocker. Welcome to a emergency hot takes PGA Tour Live merger episode of Costas and McCord off their rockers. I'm Mike Abram. I'm producer and co-host with Peter and Gary. And today we've got, we're going to go deep. We're going to dive deep into this PGA Tour Live potential merger. All that's happened in the last day or so. Uh, we're going to really get into that. Our normal episodes will feature a lot of Peter's tips. We'll feature story time um, with some great stories you've never heard before that the guys were never able to tell. We've got another seven episodes out there on our YouTube channel. Be sure to check it and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss an episode. We'll have another one next week. I'll be down in L.A. at the U.S. Open. The guys will be on. We'll be talking about their U.S. Open picks and some more about this Live PGA Tour chaotic fiasco and everything that's going on. Uh, and remember, check out our presenting sponsor, Swing You. The Swing You app at the App Store is phenomenal. It's the best app out there, not only for GPS on your phone, on the golf courses, but some incredible game improvement tools like Strokes Gained and some great teaching on there as well, green reading. And our technology sponsor is Foresight, uh, makers of Sim in the Box, uh, the Quad Pro and the GC3 products. But uh, now, without further ado, let's get to Gary and Peter talking about this PGA Tour and live potential merger that was just announced. Mike Abram here, Costas and McCord, off their rockers. It's an emergency podcast, one of thousands probably out there. Everything that went down yesterday with the live PGA Tour merger talks, it's fluid, it's chaotic, it's crazy, and Peter and Gary are here to maybe give us a little bit of input and uh, sanity on what's happening. Peter, Gary, thanks for being here. Um, you guys have been doing radio, TV, getting asked questions. Peter, give me your initial thoughts and reactions on this uh, on this unexpected announcement. Well, I, I, when you said chaotic and crazy, I thought you were talking about Gary and me. But uh, this <laughs> I is, know that's the this is that's uh, true. <laughs> the uh, you know what I am I am simultaneously uh, happy and really pissed off. Uh, and I think that's the way a lot of people might be in this case. I mean, it never had to be this way. In my opinion, it didn't have to come to this. Um, but now we're going to have some sort of res resolution that I think will hopefully be good for the game of golf professionally. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to impact regular golfers one way or the other. But um, when Liv came on the scene, I took issue with the way the tour responded. Um, I know they went to a crisis management firm. Um, they, they had their hands in that 9-11 group that, that picketed out West. Right. Um, and their response to this whole thing wasn't a business response, wasn't a golf response. It was a morality response. And, and anytime you get in an argument with somebody and it turns into morality, that's like moral versus immoral good versus evil. It's really divisive and it, it creates hatred, creates anger. And, and that's what happened. I mean, everybody took a side, whether you liked it or not. And there was no reason to take a side uh, except for the way the tour responded to the emergence of live. And so now the tour looks like complete hypocrites, at least Jay Monahan does, because he's reversed his moral stand for money. Uh, and, and, and supposedly for the good of the game. But I, th that's my initial reaction. It never should have been a moral argument in the first place. Uh, that should have been kept out of it. It should have been an, an issue about golf and, and golf competition. Gary, what say you? Um, I've never really been hit by a stun gun, but I kind of the day after, I feel like I should feel, if I ever did get hit by a stun gun, that I am... Uh, I have many 
thoughts, many questions as everybody has. I mean, many. I don't know how this is supposed to work. Uh, I don't know who's in charge. I don't know this new separate entity has signed on to be a, a revenue producing entity, this new LLC involved with, I guess, Live and Us and, and the European tour. I don't know if the DOJ, the Department of Justice, is going to come in and stop this unification from being, it, it was initially, they're already on it for other reasons, but it was initially set up that uh, <clears throat> there was antitrust questions going on here. Well, we have just taken antitrust into, into the next, uh, into the next field. And uh, for sure, there, this is seriously an antitrust situation where they're going to control world bank golf. So, Again, Peter, if you get down to it, I, I don't know if this thing is going to exist. Um, everybody is genuflecting now. Uh, we're going to have to wait for the gov government to get involved. We've got to wait for the Saudis to get involved with what? I don't know. I don't know how they're going. I don't know anything. Literally, well, I don't know anything. It just got, smells funny. Well, how about it gets announced yesterday and Secretary of State Blinken was in Saudi Arabia yesterday by chance. Yeah, uh, obviously yeah, negotiating yeah. things like making more oil making for deals. cheaper. But could this have been part of the yeah. whole mix? I, I doubt that golf is on Blinken's radar. I doubt, radar. It. I doubt I mean, it. I think they're just trying to get the oil, oil, oil prices down. <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, yeah, there, there's way more questions that were created yesterday than answers given. That's for sure. Um, and and I go back though to the to the whole thing that. You know, nobody knew anything about it, and yet Monahan comes out and says it's the players' tour. Really? Yeah. I mean, they got to find out about this on Twitter, and you call it the players' yeah, tour. Bad look. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You know. Norman didn't find out about this. It looks like he's on his way out. Um, I don't know how Monahan survives this. I really don't. I don't see how he can regain the trust of the players. Now, it's a possibility, but I, I don't see it, and yet. In this whole debacle, it looks like he's going to get promoted to the CEO of this for-profit entity, whatever that ends up being. Um, and, and so now that they're, they're claiming Peter, victory. Let's, let's, go ahead. Go ahead. let's go over this uh, uh, administratively um, for the last two months. Okay. Uh, the tour set on a new path um, to have these designated tournaments. I believe there are 14 of them now. Higher purses. Uh, where all the players, the good players, play as one, play together. That's basically the offset Liv, who had 48 guys in their field, and obviously all their players were playing together at the same time. So this was, that riot was incited by Tiger Woods and by, <clears throat> and by uh, Rory McIlroy. Uh, Rory is on the board, got together with Tiger. They had a meeting of 24 players. They went in and they basically changed the venue of the tour. Okay, that's number one. The tour administration had nothing to do with that. Uh, they came in and they, they said, okay, we will go ahead and we will administer that. That's good. Now, the next time we all meet, about what, two months later now, we've got the commissioner changing the venue of world golf without the inclusion of anybody. Now, this organization is owned by the players and the um, the the board, the administration is supposed to administer. Um, they are supposed to go through certain channels. They are supposed to go through player advisory boards, and then the player directors. Yeah. And then we have we have officers uh, uh, on the tour, uh, business guys, Jimmy Dunn, all these guys, brilliant guys. Um, and all of a sudden, I, who's in charge here? Who is who is yeah. dictating policy, Peter, in this whole thing? And where does this chaos reside right now in whose corner and who's running it? Because the delegation of authority now is absurd to me. I, I don't know where it's coming from. I, I know Jay's taking it right, right in the forehead. And I agree with you. I, I don't see now how he can survive, but then again, he's the only puppet up there that they can throw things at. So that's where I am right now. I'm just, I'm looking at the vacuous nature of administration and the communication thereof with the players. All these guys are going, wait a minute. I find all this news on Twitter. 
You know, yeah. I'm, I'm on I'm on a player advisory board. I don't know anything. The top players in the world don't know anything, and this has changed on a global scale. What? That's impossible. Yeah, and, so anyway, and you got, uh, that's what I'm kind of looking at. And you got yesterday in that player meeting, the word was it was 90%, 10% against Monaghan. Some players yelling out for him to resign. Uh, Rory McIlroy, I think, told Grayson Murray in the meeting, uh, when Grayson Murray said, you need to step down, you need to resign, Rory yelled out, you need to play better. And then Grayson Murray said, bleep you, Rory. Very contentious. <laughs> well, was, we thought it was, was in the old we, days. Yeah, we thought it was contentious. In the old days, on, in board, board meetings, that, yeah. that was Jim Colbert's famous line. Everybody started arguing, <laughs> Jimmy, just go play better. And everybody started laughing, <laughs> which is, bottom line is right. You know, you play better. Now, this board meeting was held at the Canadian Open where the field – Obviously, he's depleted quite a bit. Opens next right. week. We've had we've had some uh, designated tournaments. So that player right there is a guy that's really um, he is kind of on the cusp of everything. He's not really you know in on the tour. He's not in the designated anything like that. And they're yeah. going nuts. But can you imagine what the guys that are affected, the guys that were offered the opportunity to go to live. Um, and turned it down, and we're loyal to the tour. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, here comes all these guys from Live that weren't weren't uh, um, uh, they weren't loyal to the tour. Went over, got their money, are coming back. Those are the guys going to be in the next meeting, and that's going to be really entertaining. I mean, we need to put a bug in that next meeting. But yeah, for, this for sure, chaos, Peter. I think it's just. I think this is it, it's 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 comical to a sense that the, I see no structure whatsoever now it should come out it could come out later it, it obviously they do have an idea of the structure but no one was <laughs> informed about it and that's that's the thing that gets me is the lack of communication with the tour and their their players the constituents yeah well when when this announcement was made i mean right at the top of the announcement it said all current litigation to be dropped and and ended and and while while the live versus PGA Tour and PGA Tour versus live litigation may be over with, I think we're in for a whole boatload of litigation over this thing. I mean, this was done like Biden doing an executive order, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. he didn't ask Congress for anything. Yeah. He just yeah, he just you. with a stroke of a pen, it, it was it was done. And and the the, the pack has to approve these things. And it, he went right by them. Uh, I don't know <laughs> obviously how they didn't. No. He he just he just didn't I think, talk to them, which is it's amazing. Just, I mean, I yeah, and, yeah. again a hundred years ago I was on the board, so I went through all this. I was one of the, the three player directors. So you go through these different deals. Now, what I see Peter coming out of this, and I've I've already heard the word. Uh, the tour players are are going to get really pissed off that they have yeah. no. They have no say whatsoever in the operation. Can you, of the say, tour. Can you say union? Oh boy, it is. I was just going to say, say we are we are now going to get in the throes of the players. Somebody's going to get together. And go, guys, we got to unionize. Uh -huh. We're getting no representation whatsoever. The player advisory board is a farce. It, it it's been there forever. It's a bunch of guys sitting around, and they're supposed to communicate to the to, to the board members, the players, uh, reps, the uh, for policy board members and, you know, as, as a conduit to the tour. So there's a stepping pattern there that, that you get, you get your ideas and then you put ideas forth and then the tour goes through all these. And, well, well, none of that happened. None of it. So where are the players sitting there now going, wait a minute, what's my representation? I have none. Literally have none. This, this guy's running rogue, making, making deals on a global scale. And I'm the player. I own this thing and I have no say. Boy, I, I I can see unionizing coming up in wow. two seconds, and that'll get really nasty. I mean, really and, nasty. Uh, speaking of nasty, speaking of nasty, though, I mean, it's like, listen, by taking the moral high ground, supposedly what he thought was the moral high ground, Monahan made it personal with all of the players that left to go to live. And they took a risk, and they got rewarded for their risk, um, and and players that elected to stay loyal didn't get rewarded directly at least um, from this whole debacle. But now he made it personal. I mean, the vitriol thrown at Phil Mickelson 
at Dustin Johnson, right. players who have yeah. who have been supportive of the tour for their whole lives. And I mean, he he just ripped them a new one. And now the the players who have stayed back, the Rory McIlroys and whatever, they're saying they can't come back without paying penance. Um, and this is going to create more uh, animosity. It's going to create more anger amongst the players if they come back with without paying penance or if they're forced to, to pay penance to come back. Will they come back? Who knows? But this this whole thing, the way it was, it was a knee jerk reaction, in my opinion, uh, by yeah. Monaghan in the beginning. And it's another knee jerk reaction right now to try and put an end to all this. But it's not going to put an end to it, at least not in the short term. This is going to take years and years and years for this to settle down and players to come back and talk to each other again and, and respect each other. Gary and Peter, could there be with the money from this um, the Saudi fund, could there be money that's going to be set up to kind of placate these guys who didn't make the move over? Since Liv was ready to put out over two billion they had offered to, you know, whether it was Tiger Woods or Hideki Matsuyama, Roy, it came out today that uh, Ricky Fowler was offered seventy five million and they didn't go. Will there be some type of fund for those players that now with a for-profit organization they can do or will there be something okay. Gary you propose something to all the regular tour guys maybe to fund um, their pension plans what do you think there Gary I I, I don't I don't know I don't know the pound of flesh I don't know how what would stay. you what would you do I, if you I were in that know. position if you were the commissioner oh, wow. right I now would, Gary, would, tell us what you would do I, well first of all I am going to go to I'm going to get a players meeting every day for the next whatever, how long it takes. And I'm going to communicate. I'm going to communicate why this deal is done. I'm going to communicate where these two different divergent businesses are going, one for profit and one for nonprofit. We have a 5016C on the tour that's nonprofit, and they established this LLC as a for-profit structure, for-profit. Wow. Okay, what the hell does that mean? Uh, well, that means it's going to be two different entities. One's going to be for profit. That sounds like to me a team deal that you're going to have and you'll be able to buy and you're going to be able to <coughs> to buy a franchise, so to speak. And 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 hopefully that occurs and you can get, you know, you, you can build equity in that uh, the selling of those on a global basis. Oh, that sounds great. All this crap sounds great. But right now, Here. there's no communication. There was no communication how it got started. So players left and right, and I'm talking to them, and I'm talking to them, and I'm talking to them. What do you think? What do you think we ought to do? They need to be in the corral now of knowledge. They need to be set forth first in any decisions made. The players have to be actively participating in that process coming up, or you've got. As Peter said, you've got chaos, and it's going to end up being a union strike, and the players are unionized, and yeah. so they can get their their uh, feelings up. I mean, look, Gary, Jimmy Dunn over, was over credited, to the administration. Jimmy Dunn, Gary, was was credited with with brokering this deal and and negotiating behind closed doors and and whatnot. Three months ago, he banned live players from playing in the Seminole Pro Am. Which, yeah. which he is, he is the major domo at, at Seminole, uh, and, and he had a level of vitriol for Liv and what they were doing and the players who went there that was second to none, right? And now all of a yeah. sudden he's brokering a, yes. he's bro brokering a peace deal. Um, and, huh. and, huh. you know, <laughs> yeah, his, <what>? company, <laughs> his company lost $67 What are you trying to back me in a corner here? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 think, I think his company lost 67 people. Um, from, from yes. his office yes. in, in the yes. 9-11 tragedy. Um, and, and so, yes. I mean, th th this whole thing just is just mind boggling to me that, that people could take this, this high ground yeah, it, moral it, stand and then flip flop like that in 24 hours or seemingly 24 hours, seven weeks, but it's yeah, it like 24 hours. That, could, yeah. Yeah. It, it could seven, be the money. It, seven weeks. How that thing wasn't leaked. It's everything. I mean, I, I think it's everything. I think it's litigation. 
uh, where that was going. It, it was the fact that they're not going anywhere. Live was not going anywhere. They got six hundred and seventy billion, and it's and it's run by Yasser. Uh, all that all that money is run by him. So you know he can dedicate that to wherever he wants. He they would you know be a good partner. And, and bottom line, guys, he gets the gets the money. Business is money. The tour is business. It's a good on a global stage right now. And you need some kind of pot to pull the money out of. And boy, that's one hell of a pot. So in essence, you know, maybe it was, maybe it's the right thing to do in 10 years. Well, we don't know, but I know one thing you didn't include the players on, on any of this and any of these policies and these, the policies that are going to be administered and just for the whole concept. And boy, that is your major flaw in this whole thing hey, hey guys uh, i want this is the players tour i, I was going to swing it to something that you've got so much um experience with is on the broadcast side we've all been critical of the live <laughs> broadcast i want to hear what your again everything's speculation right now right we don't know anything peter you can start what is your speculation on for i guess we don't know what we're going to have is live going to only be there was word yesterday uh, from a couple articles is going to be just the team portion and PGA tour is going to continue. But what do you think is going to happen broadcast wise? And then I know Gary, you have a thought about that, that what you might think you're going to be seeing. Go ahead, Peter. Well, Gary, well, Gary, go ahead, Peter. Gary will be interested. Go. Gary will be interested in, in, in what I'm about to say right now, G- given our, our previous existence at yes. CBS. Uh, <laughs> yes. But I, I, I know for a fact that announcers were called and told to not say anything. Don't don't okay. say anything about this. No, have no opinion. What network? What, 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 Peter, are you talking about CB- Live on CW? No, no, C- about CBS and NBC. C- no, CBS called CBS announcers. I, I have that on good authority that that they were told not yeah, to say that anything. Sounds right. right? Yeah, wow. I said, that's their modus yeah. operandi. Yeah. They, they get they get yeah. scared shitless yeah. to, to to piss off anybody, um, and. In this whole new ecosystem, I would think that uh, wherever it ends up, the contracts that were just negotiated a couple of years ago have to be revisited. I, I, I don't see how you can help but do that. I don't know where the, the best players are going to be playing. I don't know if it's just in the majors. I don't know what kind of uh, synergy there's going to be between the, the, live, the live events and the PGA Tour events, or if there's going to be a third league or a fourth league or whatever, that's that's all to be determined. Um, but the television contracts, uh, at least in America, I would think are going to be really affected by this to the extent that they're going to want to renegotiate. You know, that's that's my view. Hey, I, Gary, Peter, Peter, I would have thought that renegotiation. Well, hold it. I, I would have thought that renegotiation renegotiation would have started earlier. When when these guys signed the contract, and I believe it was 21, and it goes through 2030, and the media rights contract for all those parties, NBC, Golf Channel, obviously NBC, Golf Channel is the same, uh, CBS Sports, um, it was it's through 2030. And I believe it's, I blink the numbers, $736 million a year up to, up to 2030 uh, for the tour. So now, when I sign this contract, uh, let's let's say that that I'm a, a sponsor, a title sponsor, and I sign this contract in a good faith, I was going to get the best possible field. Well, at that point, Live was not in existence. So all of a sudden, now these guys are taken off, and they're playing Live tournaments. Okay, the, the right. Brysons and the the Kepkas and and uh, DeChambeau, so forth, and they're there. There. Okay, okay, that's fine. And then all of a sudden, this thing came along uh, from Tiger and uh, Rory that we're going to do designated tournaments where other tournaments are going to be boosted. They're going to be boosted up in the air with money and with players' attendance. Oh, wait, and let, me, let, 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 me, let me stop, let, let, let Again, me stop I'm you right there. go like Honda. Let me stop you yeah, right there, you. though. I don't, think, I don't think the tour has the money to carry those tournaments on in the future. I, I don't think enough sponsorship money has come in. The tour has been funding exactly. those things in, in the startup. And so I think that was part of the issue here as well, Gary, that those elevated events, There's no you, need somebody to, you, ha- yep. you need somebody to pay for them. Yep. Yeah. And the title sponsors, that's why a lot of them now 
you can see a lot of these guys pulling out. Uh, you saw Honda pulled out. Uh, they got stuck between two designated tournaments. Hell, there's nobody there. There's nobody there. Yeah. So are they going to stay uh, on the on the schedule with with fields that are not represent represented by what I signed in good faith to get? So this whole thing it, it splatters with inconsistencies that this the meteorites deal was signed and it was a nine I believe it's a nine years twenty twenty two through thirty. Um, but when they signed it, all these things were not in participation. Uh, the live tour and all this, all this other, the, the purse is going up. Uh, I talked to a sponsor yesterday. We sat at the table and talked about it. And he was telling me about, yeah, it's hard to come up with the money now if these guys are demanding to get tournaments. So these corporations are taking a look at it going, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't afford it for what I'm getting. So we're seeing a depletion of those sponsors. So yeah, you would think that the tour in good faith is a business partner, uh, the media rights deal, the networks, let's get together redo this thing and see if we can but the, the tour has already spent some of this money already so it's yeah. again the layers of this this is a, this is the biggest onion i've ever seen in my life you're <laughs> going to be taking layers off of this for decades trying to figure out how we're going to go where we're going on this thing from all the different angles and all the different uh nuances of running a global business with all these different partners it's Oh, I'm so glad I'm not on the board. <laughs> hey, Peter, uh, your your yeah. biggest winner, your biggest winner from yesterday, and your biggest loser. Uh, <laughs> biggest losers, biggest loser is really easy. That's Jay Monahan. There's no yeah. two ways around that. I mean, everybody's calling him names up one side, down the other, and justifiably, in my opinion, because because he he's been in, over his head since the beginning, in my opinion. Um, and, and he handled it wrong from the get-go, and he's handling it wrong getting out of it. So he's the biggest loser. Uh, the biggest winner um, yeah. is probably the, the, the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they have done a, a phenomenal job. I'm a Formula One fan. They have done a phenomenal job with Formula One um, and uh, where they put their money and, and, and what's happened to that those races and, and uh, the teams and, and so on and so forth. There's more money involved than ever before. We now have uh, three different races, four different races in America, right? So, yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's huge what they've done to Formula One. And I think they could have the same impact for professional golf. Um, it could be had huge. not yeah. this whole thing, had, had not this whole thing devolved into a morality argument and, and you got, journalists who are who are taking up the side of Khashoggi. Uh, you, you've got human rights activists who are selectively hypocritical in, in who they decide to uh, get angry at for human rights abuses. Uh, China's left yeah. out in the, in the mm. clear, but Saudi mm. is not because, because Jay Monaghan is the guy that really started the whole morality issue. That's, that's, that's where I think this thing got off the rails and it didn't need to. Over 55 years ago was the last time we had major sport uh, merger. It was the AFL and the NFL. Gary, for your take, how big could this be? We just heard Peter talking about Formula One. Um, there's nothing as that dominates other than that that dominates. And Formula One doesn't like run NASCAR also. What they're talking about and you know, looping in, grabbing the LPGA – how big, how different could this be? And how big, again, getting away from the geopolitical aspect, how big could this be for golf fans and for professional golfers? Well, you know, if you, again, we're taking, we're taking a lot of layers off this onion. Yeah. Um, if you look at the global aspect of it, um, of golf and uh, the monopoly that they've, they've created at this point, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's good or bad. Uh, there's one thing the tour's done the last two years that they model, and most of the stuff the tour's modeled in administrative aspect of it is, is been, they've copied the NFL, copied the NFL in the, in the pension plan. They copied right. the NFL in a lot of things. And the one big thing they've copied is the gambling. 
and we have gone to bed with the two of the biggest uh, outlets for gambling there there is. Can you imagine yeah. on a global level now if those wow. two parties are involved and you go to them and go, hey, we're all over the place now and you're our guys. And, yeah. and uh, you know, DraftKings, I mean, my God, on a global level, I don't know how that works. I mean, I got no idea. I don't know if it yeah. goes outside <laughs> of the confines of the United States. Sure. But there's an opportunity there. Again, every aspect of the, the tour and the revenue streams has gone global now. Okay? It's gone global because there's a pot of gold there. And we've got into that pot of gold. As Peter said, um, uh, regardless of where that pot of gold is now, because this is all business, people. It's all business. And it's money. And the money controls that. The money is that pot of gold. And, uh, and we've got our hands in the middle of it. For whatever repercussions there are, we got our hands in the middle of it. Now we sit back and we watch how this thing works. <laughs> and it's going to be, this is going to be worthy. I mean, the first interview I did, it tells you exactly where we're going with this. It was with TMZ. Yeah. They're interested in golf. Are you yeah. shitting me? TMZ? <laughs> this right. is TMZ stuff. This is this whole yeah. thing is TMZ stuff. Because this is going to be a fire sale beyond belief of what's going on. And I, I, I am... I am so I'm having a ball just kind of watching it from I hope I don't get hit by shrapnel, but I'm watching it from <laughs> far away. And it's it's extraordinary. Peter, can I and, get your take? Gary, you know, on, oh, good. Sorry. Mike, let me let me finish up. You said winners and losers. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, yeah. as we're sitting here talking, um, I, I, if Saudi Arabia is intent on changing, uh, if they are honestly trying to improve conditions in their country and, and the way things are done. I, I think potentially golf fans um, and women golfers in particular can benefit right. dramatically from this. I think they've already got the, the ladies Aramco series, um, but I, I think they could really bump up the LPGA, fold it all in under that same umbrella, um, yep. have tournaments uh, where, where the men and the women are playing the same week, the same venue. Um, yep. uh, women's golf could benefit dramatically, and it would help Saudi uh, with with their perception of how they treat women. Um, so I, I think that there's there's a whole lot of possible good stuff that could come from this, provided that's the avenue that they choose. Right, right well, now we right. have no idea. I mean, we have. No, I mean, they they've thrown us in the middle of 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 you know sixteen forty in the middle of America and, and told us we have to go to California. How the hell are you going to get there? We, we have no idea. I mean, it, there's no roads. There's no nothing. Um, but but, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Well, the, the LPGA thing yeah, makes I, so I, much I sense. Yeah, I agree 100%. I, 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 yeah. I was going to say. You're well, it is. I mean, guys, we can't, we can't get naive enough to think that this whole thing, if there's an umbrella, this is the biggest umbrella you've ever seen. It's going to include – Golf from everywhere is going to go underneath this umbrella. And, of course, the LPGA is going to be under that umbrella because this is a global takeover. This is not a regional takeover. And it's going to be a global takeover in revenue streams. So you control everything you can in this. And, and again, they've got the pot to do it, and they will do it. It's, it's, all, part yep. of the, it's all part of the plan. If they're, they didn't get the plan and out but it you can see it's quite obvious um, you know we yeah and uh, peter we, i agree 100 percent. the lpga is definitely going under this umbrella yeah P peter yeah. and gary we've heard from especially brandel chambly eamon lynch um about sports washing <laughs> sports washing and sports washing the thing that they never talk about is sports sports washing flows both ways yes it can help a regime like the saudis but it also flows our western uh, morals and our Western way flows back to them. And we've seen that's something about pulling them along. And I guess a lot of the live players, whether it's Phil Mickelson or uh, Bryson DeChambeau just on CNN yesterday was talking about, but how uh, obviously they've been, they've won in this case. How do you think uh, someone like Brandel Chambly extricates himself from the position he's in and, and where does that leave him and then how 
big is this for a Phil Mickelson? What what does that do to his legacy? What does that do to his potential uh, broadcast future? Well, in, well, in my mean, opinion, I've, I've talked to Brandel a bunch. I played golf with him three days ago. Yeah. Um, we're going through this stuff uh, prior to it. And Brandel's going to stay steadfast in his position. Uh, he, he's He's... You know he's he's on the podium of Golf Channel. He is he is their uh, he is their spokesman. Um, he told me he's he has no interference whatsoever uh, for anything he says with uh, with NBC or the Golf Channel. So he is he is he is free to roam verbally yep. up there and form his opinions. And he has formed steadfast opinion. He won't he won't deter from that. He will ref, uh, basically he will reflect it towards the the betterment of golf on a global scale and uh that this this will help um he, he doesn't like the, the people that are invested in it um and he I, he will stick with that he, he will stick with that and he'll go down fighting with that uh and he and phil will still go at it <laughs> and phil, uh, but hey peter i got one for you you want to have some fun with this uh, okay let's i'm going to take you back I'm going to take you back to about, it was about six years ago, seven years ago, maybe when, um, when Nick Faldo was, uh, came off. <laughs> I know right ABC where you're going. <laughs> and okay. And Laney, Laney <laughs> was just hired by CBS. Well, they called Nick and got Nick on his boat and said, would you like the job? And he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and he goes, yeah, I, I'll take it. So they can Laney. And Laney went to the Golf Channel doing a great job on that Champions Tour. And Faldo came over. Okay, controversial, uh, opinionated, uh, goofy, I love him. And, uh, and, and now our broadcast is gone. Um, they got rid of some characters. They got rid of swing. Uh, uh, swing you two guys. Coaches. They got rid of a lot of yeah. stuff. And, and they became very staid, I think. Uh, regardless of what they told us, that we we were the reason, one of the reasons for them, them being stale. Um, God. And now, and now they've got you know a bunch of our friends, but they have got all the same person, in my opinion. Okay. And yeah. I, you know, Frank Sherkanian taught us best. Um, you get people from different opinions, different, uh, different psychological, different philosophies, different everything, and you put them in a room and you let them fight it out. That's entertainment. That's why all these shows, you go from Cheers, you go from Friends, everybody had different opinions, they all got together and they fought it out. Well, we're getting to the point now where these broadcasts are the same guys, good guys, but they all have the same opinion. They all came from the same place. And uh, it's got, to me, it's kind of stale. Nothing against who's there. It's not their fault. It's the hiring practices the mix. of these networks that really have no idea what they're doing, in my opinion. Um, well, what they what, would, what they've done though, point, what they've done though, what, what they've done is they, they they have when you talk about friends and cheers, you had a you had a team of of people there with a common purpose, um, whether they were drinking <laughs> at the bar and cheers or in the apartment and in, in in friends or whatever. But yep. now there's no team in in professional golf television right now. It's all individuals. And they're all looking out for themselves. They're all trying to make a name for themselves. And it's I, I, me, me, and there's no team. And, and as a consequence, there's no, there's no, uh, there's very little entertainment value uh, in the in the telecast. And listen, if they come back and revisit these these contracts, you could still see Phil Mickelson at CBS. I, I think that's a distinct possibility, you know. And I think that would be hilarious. I mean that, that's that's where I was going because um, I they, they Peter knows too they they've been trying to get Phil they tried to get Phil for a couple of years um, <laughs> you could get into the inside of this as Peter knows uh, the reason why Faldo left uh, we can do that in another podcast but uh, it had a lot to do with Phil and uh, the uh, regime at CBS not uh, giving him an extension on his contract. And he said, okay, I'm out. I'll go to a farm in Montana. Um, and there he said. So anyway, um, here comes Phil, who they were trying to get for a couple of years. And now you want to talk about polarizing? 
And that's all you do in this business. You get people that are polarizing. That's why Howard Cosell was so good in golf. Yeah. That's why Johnny Miller was so good polarizing. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk to you. This, this would be, this would be the biggest poll polar uh, existence in the world. If, if Phil came over, cause he represents both sides. And now I want to see how he would explain things uh, in a golf tent. Uh, I think it would be fantastic. But I, I tell you what, if I was not a golf fan, I would yeah. tune in to watch. Uh, yeah. And he and Jim Nance are very good friends. Very, very good friends. So I, I would I would shake up this whole thing. And Trevor, I think Trevor Emelin's doing a hell of a job. Uh, really good job. Um, uh, but they, they need a little spark in their assistance, in my opinion. We could agree What's to disagree like there, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, well. I, what do you guys think, think it's going to be like uh, next anyway, week? Anyway, we're at that – that nah, that is something. There's not even. It's not. That's not has to do with anything we're talking about here. That was. I got. It I got kind of relates. Off the track you guys were. You guys both. So, you guys both um, came to the same thought and opinion. Well, hey, Gary, what do you? How is this going to be? And Peter, uh, next week the poor USGA at the U.S. Open, L.A. Country Club. <laughs> uh, bad timing. Bad wow. timing. Bad timing for yeah. them, huh? Bad timing. Uh, I mean, really, is, really bad the, timing. The, I feel I feel really what's bad. What does that tell you, Peter? Open. What does that tell you? They didn't tell Peter, the USGA. They don't care about the US. That tells you the, the PGA Tour doesn't care about the USGA. Uh, yeah, they, they don't care I about I think well, that tells you that this thing had to be done right now because there was a leak somewhere. And they oh, panic yeah. and hit the button. Because oh, they yeah. wouldn't have they'd done it after the week after. These guys all live together, the U.S. and PGA of America, um, uh, the, the DP tour. All, everybody lives together. They try to politically do the right thing. They're not going to announce something like this, a bombshell of all bombshells in the world of sports. They're going to announce it a week before arguably one of the, well, the four biggest tournaments of the year, and you could put it in any category you want of those four. But to announce yeah. prior to that, no, that was this was done happen chance. This was not done politically whatsoever. My opinion. Well, I, I, I have a agree or disagree. I feel, I well, number one, I feel really badly for the Canadian Open. This is two years in a row yeah. now they've gotten screwed. Yep. You no, know, yeah. last yep. last year it was Monahan making that speech. Have you ever had to apologize for playing the PGA Tour? He's yeah, talking to Jim right. Nance, right? And, yeah, and so yeah. the, that, that usurped the Canadian Open. Now this happens. Nobody's talking about the Canadian Open. Nobody's going to – the only reason people are going to tune in to watch the Canadian Open is to hear if somebody says something about this merger. Uh, I think that's, that's really bad for the okay. Canadian Open. Now, let me ask – let me tell you this. You're, you said Canadian Open ten times. Okay, that's more than anybody said Canadian <laughs> Open in the last yeah. ten years. Yeah. So yeah. I I agree that this strife and and this innuendo and rumor is actually going to help because they got no field whatsoever. Rory's sitting up there yelling at the other players, but this actually will get some eyeballs. Just what you said at the end, they're going to tune in to see these guys being interviewed and what they think. And I, yeah. I, I and that again, if you if you throw a little gasoline in the fire, you're gonna sit there and watch the flame. And I and they've got a flame right now. They've got a flame. Uh, and that's a Canadian I left, open. I, I think they're in good position, my opinion. Well, my my last two questions for you, because I'm getting a headache. <laughs> <laughs> from me or from, from no, Abram. From this whole this whole this whole thing. It's just oh, like okay. whoa, yeah. I don't oh, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Uh, yeah. Two questions. Let me get them both out before you answer. One, okay. we know how Rory has been affected by carrying the water for the PGA Tour. It's affected his play uh, on an intermittent basis. Does he make or miss the cut this week? That's question number one. Question number mm. two, will there be cameras around next week at L.A. Country Club when Phil meets Mike Wan? Wow. Um, there, if there's not cameras around in your second question, there are going to be a lot of phones with a video on. Yeah. And, uh, and, and getting that, um, uh, Rory, one of the best players in the world. Yeah. He'll make the cut. He'll make the cut there. Uh, uh my opinion, you ask me. 
and uh, but it is, you know, it's it's the first time. It, it, it's it's interesting when you go to the the U.S. Open. And when I think of L.A. North, and I grew up in Southern California, played L.A. North for a long time since I've been about 15 or 16 years of age. And there's one reason you went to L.A. North is that you could peek over the fence on uh, the 14th, 14th, <laughs> 14th hole. The Playboy Mansion was right there. It was right up against the fence of the tee. And as kids, we used to climb up this really – it was a high fence to get a glimpse of the animals that were creaching. And, and of course, you're 15 – so you're looking for another kind of animal back there. And we're not going to, there's going to be none of that at the, at the open. It's going to be, and obviously the Playboy Mansion has moved. Uh, but uh, those quite and about Hollywood stuff, and it's going to be all about this. And it's going to usurp everything there is in the world. And it usually comes out of Hollywood, doesn't it? And it comes out of L.A. And it's, it's going to be called. What a, what a place to be with this all is, this going on. The, the number one story in all of sports right now, breaking, you know, forget about the NBA finals that, that have uh, game three tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be there next week at the U.S. Open. I'll touch base with you guys. We'll, we'll turn this on again and get some input maybe Tuesday or Wednesday pre-U.S. Open and see what's going on on the ground there. Um, any last words, Peter, uh, ultimately for golf fans? Get rid of all the chaos. It all gets settled down. Is this a good thing? I think ultimately it will be a good thing in the long run. I, I really do. Yeah. I trust that things will calm down. I don't know how long that's going to take. Um, certainly it won't calm down until they they formulate their structure and they, and they present to the golf world uh, what their plans are down the road for tournaments and, and how this is all. It's easy to say that we're merging. Um, it's another thing to explain how they're merging and what, what that merger is going to actually look like, what form it's going to take. And until that happens, I think we've still got chaos. I think we've still got name calling. I still think we've got vitriol. And, and uh, as they said uh, back with Saturday Night Live, Jane, you ignorant <laughs> slut. I think they're going to be calling each other names back and forth um, for, for a while. Gary? I think this kind of sums it up. Uh, last night, I texted a guy that uh, I had on our radio show that is the tour liaison between the <laughs> players and administration. We, and yeah, Jason we, Gore, yeah, a good we had him. We had him on our, no, on our podcast. We had him Great on our guys. video podcast. Yes. We had him on the show. Yes. Yeah. Does he still have guys? So I, call, I texted him. I yeah really <laughs> that's another story right Peter? Uh, I texted him last night at eight forty nine my time and he is on East Coast he's in Ponte Vedra obviously he's the player liaison between the tour and the players and I said simply my head hurts exclamation points I get back in two seconds I get back this just your head you're lucky. <laughs> that was, so uh, that pretty much, pretty much, uh, uh, really kind of puts in quotations what uh, we're going to go through here uh, coming up and um, in in the near future as this thing really bubbles up and gets to name calling. Um, yeah, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's that's it. We're going to see what happened. Who's in charge? Well, Gary and Peter, thanks as always. Uh, viewers, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification button so you see the next one that comes up there. We've got a new episode coming out next week. Uh, the guys will give their US Open previews. We're gonna have Peter was with Lewis Black uh, and Maury Povich and some other comedians for a charity golf term. We've got some really fun stuff from there on how acting, golf, and, and comedy works together uh, for Gary, for Peter, I'm Mike Abrams, Costas and McCord, off your rockers. We'll be back very soon with another show.